Hello everyone, my name is Amelia Lamar, and I'm going to be discussing gifted and talented education. Gifted and talented education is a popular point of discussion in today's schools and tends to be a highly debated topic. It is a program that is offered in some schools, but not in others. It is not federally funded, and it is up to each state and district to decide its necessity. Before we can dive further into this discussion, it is important to know what gifted and talented education is. The Elementary and Secondary Education Act defines gifted education as students, children, or youth who give evidence of high achievement capability in areas such as intellectual, creative, artistic, or leadership capacity, or in specific academic fields, and who need services and activities not ordinarily provided by the school in order to fully develop those capabilities. There are many common misconceptions or myths associated with gifted and talented education. From assuming that all students receive the highest level of differentiation possible from their classroom teachers, to mistaking AP courses as gifted education, many people have, do not have a clear understanding of what gifted and talented ed education actually is. These misunderstandings often lead to confusion among school personnel, parents, and the students involved. During the course of this presentation, we will look at the pros of gifted and talented education, the cons, and discuss the infamous learning gap and its relationship to gifted and talented education. Gifted and talented education, also referred to as GATE, has many benefits. In this section, we will look at the pros of academic challenges, student self-esteem, and equalization among all student learning levels. GATE offers students opportunities for academic challenges that they might not receive in the regular classroom. It opens the door for these students to receive differentiated instruction that is more individualized to their learning needs. This often results in higher engagement and allows them to work with teachers whose primary focus is to provide for their needs, as well as allows them to work with peers who think and work similarly to them in order to challenge and push their academic capabilities. Believe it or not, many students who are deemed gifted and talented struggle with peer interactions and their own personal self-esteem. It can be harmful for an individual when these skills are not properly recognized and developed. GATE programs encourage students to use their own creative interests and strengths. This promotes a positive sense of self-concept, boosts a student's self-esteem, and gives each student their own purpose. Two of the common misconceptions presented at the beginning of this presentation stated that gifted students always do fine in the regular classroom and that these students are always happy, popular, and well-adjusted with their peers. However, this is not true. Working in any sort of gifted program at school allows these students to work with peers who think and process information in ways that are similar to their own ways of thinking. This gives each student a sense of belonging with their, their peers. Finally, for this section, gifted and talented programs have the ability to provide equalization of services across all parts of education. Oftentimes, there is already a strong focus on providing adequate special education services and specific differentiation efforts are given to those who perform below grade level. GATE programs ensure that these same efforts are being given to students who are ready for extensions and need to be challenged. Next, we will discuss the cons of gifted and talented education. In this section, we will look at the lack of consistent defini definitions and placement requirements, lack of resources, as well as lack of properly trained teachers in this specific field. One of the biggest discrepancies in gifted education is inconsistency. While the Elementary and Secondary Education Act provides a general definition, each state and district is left to interpret it on their own. These inconsistencies often leave many students out. Along with this, 
assessment and program requirements also have no base guidelines. More often than not, students are accepted into a GATE program based on teacher recommendations and standardized testing scores. While, they, while these may be parts of the placement criteria, again, these two checkpoints alone will leave many students out. Because GATE programs are not funded or required by federal or state laws, there is an overall lack of resources and curriculum. There is no one-fits-all curriculum out there. Referring to the Elementary and Secondary Education Act again, it is recognized that students can be gifted in intellectual, creative, artistic, and or leadership matters. Therefore, each student's needs and programming will need to be highly individualized. This can potentially require a magnitude of various resources depending on the student's needs. <laughs> Lastly for this section, lack of teacher training hinders gifted and talented education. Being that these programs are not federally funded, providing proper training to teachers in these programs can be a barrier. Matthew Mugo Fields believes the modern technology that is available to schools and students allows for every student at all levels to receive a highly individualized education that is more specifically tailored to each student's needs. Therefore, designated gifted and talented programs are not necessary. He believes that any money being provided or funded toward GATE programs should be put toward technology and the resources needed to provide that individualized education for all students. The achievement gap has been a primary discussion piece for many years. Much of this discussion focuses on the lower achievement levels of students who are performing below expected grade level with a special focus on minority and low-income students. While these areas are important discussions as well, we also don't often hear about the percentages or numbers of students who are testing above grade level. Every student, every classroom has a wide range of learning levels. One study found more than 11 achievement levels among a selected group of fourth graders. Therefore, I pose the question, how do we redirect our approach to recognize the gap and needs of all students simultaneously? According to an article from the Thomas B. Fordham Institute, gifted and talented programs are a key source of enriched and accelerated academic opportunities. To summarize today's information, I have this visual for you. You can see that three-fourths of students in gifted programs are white and Asian. This could be the result of inconsistent requirements and or a lack of funding. 90% of teachers desire professional development for how to differentiate and meet the needs of gifted and talented students more effectively. And finally, as stated here, Every state does have an excellence gap. Thank you.